Thanks for staying with us here on News Talk. Bruce DePoit with you on this Monday. We turn our focus now to the immigration debate and President Obama's decision to use his executive powers to shield more than four million illegal immigrants from deportation. Reaction to his decision has been mixed, to put it mildly. Immigration reform advocates hailing Mr. Obama's actions, though some complain they don't go far enough. Republicans, meantime, condemning the move. Corey Stewart is chairman of the Prince William Board. Mark Levine is a talk show host. It's good to have both of you here. You Important too. topic. Interesting time. Thanks very much for coming in. My uh, pleasure. Corey, Thanks for having Corey us. Stewart, the president's remarks had been, the, 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 the substance of the president uh, of his speech to the nation was telegraphed in advance. We knew what he was going to say, basically. As you heard his words, what thoughts and feelings did you have? Well, I, I don't think that what he's done is going to have any sort of lasting effect. I mean, this is an executive order. It can be easily undone. Uh, by the following president, be they a Democrat or Republican. Um, and any time a president tries to overstep their bounds or even do something uh, without the support of the other party, um, it doesn't tend to last long. So I, I'm not concerned about it ha having a, a long-term policy effect on immigration policy. I am concerned, however, about some of the people he's going to be giving sanctuary to and the fact that some of them do, in fact, have criminal records. And so that's my main concern. Is it amnesty? Well, it is an amnesty. It's not a permanent amnesty. It does give uh, a shielding to these uh, people who would otherwise be uh, deported. And some of them, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of concern about if they're just here and they've, uh, they're here illegally and they're working. But for a lot of them, in our experience, we know that they do, in fact, have cr criminal records. Some of them do. And those are the ones that we're most concerned about on a, on a local level. Mark, you're shaking your head. Well, that's exactly the opposite of what President Obama said. There are 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. Uh, President Obama has deported almost twice as much as George Bush has. It's about 400,000 a year now. And he wants to focus on deporting the criminals. You cannot deport them all. Congress, Republicans in Congress, won't give them enough money to deport them all. So he's saying, let's focus on the criminals. More more criminals will be deported under this plan, Corey, than under the plan where you go and you break up families and you break up hardworking people and you let the criminals stay. He wants to focus on the criminals, and I think most Americans support that. What did you make of the decision to take action now, having a parent, uh, uh, I mean, he's telling Congress, send me a bill, and if you do, I'll, I'll rescind the actions I'm taking now. But some argue that we're in a, we're in a new time. Uh, Republicans scored significant victories at the ballot box and will uh, soon have the majority in the Senate. Would he have been better off waiting? Uh, no. I mean, he waited very, very long. A year and a half ago, the Senate, by 68 votes, 14 Republicans, including people I don't think you'd call liberals, uh, John McCain, Jeff Flake, Orrin Hatch, Lindsey Graham. It was a strong bipartisan bill. It was actually pretty tough on, on these immigrants. They had to wait 10 years and get in line behind others to get a green card. It provided border security. It was a good, strong bipartisan bill. This bill today and in the new Congress would overwhelmingly pass the House of Representatives, probably get two-thirds of the votes. Speaker Boehner will not bring it up because Republicans like the current policy better than the bipartisan bill passed by the Senate. I don't know why. The current policy doesn't make any sense. The Republicans should get to work, pass a bill. They can do it now. They can do it in the new Congress. Congress, and this will overturn everything. Corey Stewart, let me go back to the first point Mark made yeah. about um, the criminal, uh, supposed criminal element. Uh, I didn't hear the, the president say uh, that he wants to shield those with records. In fact, I'm pr pretty sure he thought, he, he said the opposite, and so the thinking would be the executive orders would would, would follow the rhetoric. Well, you have to understand that there's a big difference between what the president says and what's happening on the ground. And we've seen this over not just with the Obama administration, but with the Bush administration as well, is they say they don't want to sanctuary, uh, provide sanctuary to criminals. But when you look at his policy, uh, the, the executive order carefully, and you look at what the administration has done in the past, they only, what, who they consider criminals are felons. We have a whole series in Prince William County alone of people who have committed very serious misdemeanors, malicious wounding, sexual assault, yes. domestic assault, indecent liberties with children. And under the president's policy, those aren't considered serious crimes. They're not felonies, but they certainly do endanger the public. And those people have been released by the president, by the administration, and they're going to continue to be released and now provided sanctuary 
under the president's policy. That's our main concern. If that's true, Mark Levine, people listening to this conversation today will, I suspect, find that troubling. Well, I would hope that Corey and I would agree with President Obama. Let's get rid of those people and let the people here who have families, who haven't committed a crime, who've been here 20, 30 years, let them stay. What Corey's arguing, in fact, is let the criminals stay while we deport the good guys. And that doesn't make any sense. What President Obama has said is let's focus on the criminals first. Let's you and I agree that unless you provide enough money to deport all 11 million, which maybe you want to do and tax people to do that. But unless you want to do that, we have to pick the worst people first. That's what President Obama wants to do, including those people in Prince William County. You and I would agree that Let's uh, you get need those to focus people on first. Criminals. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is that the, the Obama administration is not doing that. That's what the They're, executive order does, well, though. Well, the executive order says that if you have a felony, uh, you, you're not eligible for this amnesty or the sanctuary. But there's a whole lot of people who are very serious criminals, malicious wounding, sexual assault, domestic assault. You would agree that those are serious crimes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but you have to undergo a full they background are check. are going to be provided sanctuary under this policy, and that's the main concern. At this point, a locality such as Prince William County can no longer defend its citizens when the federal government is giving sanctuary to criminals who are here illegally. So are you saying you would support this executive action? If you and I and President Obama agree to deport everybody with a serious misdemeanor and felony and let the people who have nothing well, on their record stay? Are you agreeing with well, that? Well, here, here's the thing. Because Republicans I'm, I'm, I'm could pass that tomorrow. I'm not in Congress, but what I am saying from a very practical perspective as a leader of a large jurisdiction is that this is why the president cannot just go on his own and develop policy by himself. So he why won't the Republicans together. do it? He, he why needs, won't they do he, it? He needs to work together with, with the Republicans. Why won't Republicans there pass a bill, this. any bill, there, in there, eight years? There is some perhaps understanding as, as to why uh, the president felt he needed to strike out on his own because um, coming out of the 2012 election, there seemed to be a pretty palpable sense in Washington that, there, that, that immigration was teed up as an issue that could move forward. Democrats, because they sort of wanted it, and Republicans, looking at how Mitt Romney fared at the ballot box compared to, say, George Bush, there was a sense that the Republicans needed it. So you, and, and maybe it was just the talking heads being talking heads, but there was this moment after 2012, it seemed, where immigration was right, and yet nothing happened. A bill did come out of the Senate, Corey, that had bipartisan support, and a lot of people believe, as Mark just stated, that Speaker Boehner didn't bring it up, not because he disliked it, but because it had the votes to pass, and he was concerned that some members of his caucus might end up in a primary. Well, I, I think the, as well they should, and I'll tell you why. That previous legislation did not provide for interior security. It did not provide to allow local law enforcement agencies uh, to effectively remove people from this country by sending them over to ICE, who in fact have criminal records and have uh, problems. And it's, it's not just about border security. You have to provide a means of removing those individuals who are criminals who've committed crimes that endanger the public safety and that's why I believe Republicans did not support that previous I ICE is? Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And that's an agency you've butted heads with about policy and just on, getting on data. The, on the ground we work with them very well. It's the policy heads at, at, at the top uh, that are providing the, the, the problems. Quick thought, Mark, before we go to break. I was going to say, the immigration law is already pretty harsh. People can be deported for using marijuana. It's that small a, a violation. And so uh, the answer is, if the Republicans don't like the specifics, they know what they can do. They can pass a law in the House. The Senate bill was supported by George Bush, supported by John McCain, supported by all the, the moderate Republicans. Uh, it seems to me that Corey and the House should get behind it. Gentlemen, stand by for just a moment. Corey Stewart, Mark Levine, stand by. We'll We'll take a break here. We'll continue our conversation in a moment. We'll work in your phone calls as well. Those of you watching After Dark can find the next segment of News Talk online at news8newstalk.com. That's news8newstalk.com. Welcome back to News Talk and our debate on President Obama's action on immigration. Talk show host Mark Levine and Prince William County Board Chairman Corey Stewart with us this time. Glad to have you there. If you have questions or topics, questions or comments on this topic, grab an open line and join the conversation that the number will post to the bottom of the screen. There it is, 703-387-1020. Write it down or simply call in. We have open lines now and we would love to hear from you. Whatever your perspective on this issue is, whatever you thought as you listened to the president uh, the other night and have listened to his commentary since, join us. Make this, uh, let's make this a two-way dialogue, 703 387 1020. That is our number here. There seems to be, gentlemen, a difference of opinion and a disagreement about whether what Mr. Obama is doing 
in, in the use of executive action goes beyond what other presidents have done. Uh, some postings on the internet, on, on, uh, online, suggest that other presidents in both parties have done similar to what Mr. Obama is doing now. Mark, is that is that really true? Every president in the last 60 years has issued an executive order on immigration, dating back to Eisenhower. There's some 39 executive orders on immigration. Uh, perhaps the most famous is George Bush Sr., when what did he do? He allowed 40 percent of the undocumented immigrants at that time not to be deported, the ones that had not committed crimes in terms of family unification. And I don't recall any talk about impeaching George Bush Sr. because of that. Basically, Congress has not given enough money to the president to deport all 11 million people. He cannot legally do that. He doesn't have the resources to do that. Republicans won't raise taxes to do that. He has to pick and choose. He's picking the criminals first. Corey right Stewart, is, is there a double standard? Oh, absolutely. I think, there, uh, of course, in the you know we're both lawyers. I mean, uh, the president does have administrative powers, but it's a matter of scale. Where is that line? Because at some point, if you change policy to the extent that President Obama has, four million people. It's not just a minor tweak to the, re to the regulations. This is a major policy change. And at some point, you've got to ask, what's the point of Congress? If you're going to act without Congress, you've undermined the entire uh, system of government on the federal level. But there are, <clears throat> there are concerns that need to be addressed that the president can't touch through executive order and therefore doesn't. So isn't there plenty of opportunity for legislation in this realm? Well, there should be legislation, and it needs to be worked out between Congress and the President, the House and the Senate, and uh, that's going to take some serious dialogue. And so far, what we've had, in my opinion, I think what the, what the President has done is to play Latinos. Notice that he didn't do anything until after the election. What he's done is had is will have no lasting effect, and he's counting on the fact that this is somehow going to win the Latino vote in 2016 for Democrats. I think they can see through it. I don't think it's going to have any lasting effect. The only way we're going to have a significant change and realistic change to America's immigration laws, which I agree they need to be changed, um, is through the dialogue between do both parties and the president and Congress. For anything to happen in the next two years, uh, re Republicans who now control both chambers would have to come up with a bill or a set of bills that, that he would sign or they would have to pass something where they could override his veto in both chambers. What would a Republican immigration bill, understanding those guardrails that we're pretty much set with for the next 24 months, what would that look like? I think the first thing you have to do is make it easier to come into the United States legally. One of the reasons, the big reason that people come into the country illegally is because it's so darn hard. Some people wait decades, many years, to come into this country the, the right way. And as a result, you have this mass uh, illegal immigration at the border which means that we don't have the ability to screen people for infectious disease, to screen people for uh, a criminal record, and, and we, so we have chaos. That's the first thing. Actually broaden the gate, make it easier to come to the country, making sure that whoever comes in here not only doesn't have a criminal background, but that they're providing, uh, they can provide for themselves and their families. And secondly, you have to provide for interior and border enforcement to make sure you are in fact removing those criminal illegal aliens who pose a public safety Mark. threat. Well, I'm surprised to find so much agreement. Uh, I didn't think we'd find agree anything uh, today. Obviously, right. we have to make it easier for people to come in, legitimate people, people who haven't broken the law, people who just want to do what our ancestors did when we when, when they came here and, and live a better life. You're absolutely right. If people come in through the front door, you can check them for disease. You can check for criminal backgrounds. There is an amp. That's why the Senate bill, harsh though it was, was supported by more than two thirds of the Senate. That's why it will be passed overwhelmingly in the House if your party, as Speaker Boehner, will allow it to be brought up. Why can't your party pass anything? It's not just that bill. The president waited six years. It's hardly the election. If he'd done it before the election, you would have said, no, he's doing this just to win the election. He waited six years for Republicans to come up with any proposal, and in the House, they didn't. Why not? Well, let me ask you this. Why is it that when the president controlled both the House and the Senate, the Democrats of the House, the Senate, and the presidency did nothing? I wish he'd done something then. Well, no question about the it. Is, is I think the Senate had to work its will. I think it took some time to get over the filibuster number. They did that. They got to 68. Uh, president Obama obviously 
put a put a premium on health care. But listen, I wish he'd done it then. Why can't the Republicans act now? They've had six years. It, it had to have been a belief that uh, a vote would have put uh, members of the Republican caucus in, in a bind and put them at risk of a primary. He was looking out for the interests of his members, even though the votes were probably there and were at a stalemate now because the Senate vote never got an up or down. I, the I Senate bill, the Senate bill never got should an up it or have down. an up or down. The Senate vote. What do you think? Here's a look. At, working on this issue for a long time and having been attacked and 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 really, I mean, I, th I think about this a lot. Um, at the end of the day. The American people need to be behind whatever legislation is passed by Congress and the President. And what the American people want, they, they support immigration. They want more people to come into this country that add to the country that are economically beneficial to, to the United States and provide jobs and create jobs. But they also want to make sure that people who come into this country do not have criminal backgrounds. And that's why they, and they support don't have the Senate bill. Disease, and that when someone is here, uh, and they do have a criminal past, and they do po pose a public safety threat, that there are the resources on the ground to provide for the removal of that person from our country. Corey, would you vote yes on the Senate bill? No, because it does not provide for interior security. This is a big problem. On the ground, which I have to deal with, I can see that Immigration and Customs Enforcement does not have the resources to remove somebody who's got a criminal background. We'll have to leave it there for today. Talk show host Mark Levine, Prince William County Board Chairman Corey Stewart. Thank you. Apologies to the callers who couldn't get through. No doubt we'll talk about this issue again another day soon. Thank you, gentlemen. Back with the program note right after this.